Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is an exciting video. This video is all about the country house parties then, think Downton Abbey, and now, <laughs> think today what happens here in the historic house that we live in, Matt Burton, as opposed to what happened about 100 years ago when my husband's great-grandmother, Alberta Sturgis, the ninth Countess of Sandwich, but an American heiress who came over during that wonderful period called the Gilded Age. Yes, she did. She came over, married my husband's great-grandfather, George Montague, in 1905, and they lived at the original family ancestral seat, Hinchingbrook House. It had been in the family since 1627. In fact, nine earls of Sandwich lived at Hinchingbrook House. And I think during that period, all throughout sort of from 1627 up until the family ancestral seat was uh, left vacated in 1955 and then eventually sold in 1962, there were lots of parties. There were a lot of staff. Let's think Downton Abbey. Lots and lots of staff lots of huge parties, dress up. I mean, I would love to be a fly on the wall and go back in time and just witness some of that. And I know from reading Alberta's letters, she kept everything, saved everything, that they did have huge parties. Many of you have commented that I'm like the Energizer Bunny and never seem to stop but sometimes I get overwhelmed and need to talk about my daily stresses with someone I trust. In a world filled with so many challenges and uncertainties, taking care of your mental health has never been more important, especially now. And mental health is just as important as physical health, yet it's often overlooked. The pressures of daily life, work, relationships, and societal expectations can take a toll on your mental well-being. And I know this firsthand. We work our physical bodies through exercise in order to stay healthy, but it's just as important to exercise our mental health. And that's why I'm so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. And because finding a therapist is a bit like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. It's so easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in the description down below. It's betterhelp.com forward slash American Viscountess. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Just like my physical body, I want to keep my mental body fit and healthy for the rest of my life. And I know I need to do both in order to live a healthy life. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. And I'm going through all these letters one by one by one. There are thousands because Alberta really was an archivist herself. She died in 1951, and as I said earlier, she married my husband's great-grandfather in 1905. She then became the Countess of Sandwich in 1916 after the 8th Earl, which she referred to as Uncle Hinch, after he died. And we are just now discovering her letters, and lots of her letters, she basically archived and packaged them up, if you like, uh, herself. So these ribbons are a lot of her original ribbons that she would tie on. I mean, it's pretty spectacular. They're everywhere, but she would uh, label them. So this is uh, soldiers, sailors and soldiers. This is around the world journey, George and Alberta in 1910. We have some special 1911. We have some special 1914 all in these ribbons. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's not very many letters. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are thousands. So over to my left, we have just many, many more boxes 
of her time. These ones that are just little ribbons here are just some very special ones to her, but we have probably a thousand more uh, 1911. Um, we probably have, I know we have at least a thousand in 1905 that she wrote to her mother, her aunt, and her brother. She wrote to them on a daily basis, but also uh, she uh, kept all the letters that she received as well. And you might be thinking, well, how, does, how do you have Alberta's letters? Because that's what's so special. These letters are actually Alberta's letters that she wrote to other people but she asked for them back. So in particular, her brother, her aunt, and her mother, who preceded her in death, she asked for the letters that she wrote to them to be returned. So we have, we're almost like matching these letters. It's incredible, but it's gonna take a really long time. And the wonderful uh, project that I have going on right now is I'm in the middle of writing my dissertation, 25,000 words. It is around, uh, the subject is of course, Alberta the ninth Countess of Sandwich, American heiress, but I have incredible virtual volunteers dotted all around the world who are helping me transcribe. So I use my scanner, I scan the letters, uh, put them into folders, and then they get sent off and they are transcribed. So I'm gonna be reading a couple of those because as I said, I want to explain to you the difference between what happened then, 100 years ago, and these lavish parties and my reality here, we do not have <laughs> lavish parties. We do something else. And that's what's so interesting. So I want to just really talk to you about how the country house has had to evolve over the past 100 years in order to preserve it for the future generations. And really, we've really had to take a huge leap forward in figuring out how do we save, if you like, these historic houses for future generations. Long gone, especially after the First and Second World War, are these, you know, large numbers of staff. No, 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 no. I'm, you can see me if you watch our sister channel, Mapperton Live, I'm on my hands and knees, whether that's scrubbing floors or whether that's uh, cleaning windows or cleaning shutters or cleaning walls, uh, I am definitely uh, stuck in. There's, <laughs> there's not that great number of uh, staff that there used to be. And I'm, I, I mean, I'm happy with it. I like to get stuck in and it makes me really have more of a connection, I think for me personally to the house. But stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we do parties differently here at Mapperton as opposed to what they did 100 years ago. And I think it's really the contrast. It's exciting to think what they did 100 years ago, the Downton Abbey, the dressing up, and um, we still are gonna do that here in about a week's time, but a little bit differently. So yes, I'm gonna be getting dressed up, but for a different reason. So I'm gonna transfer over here to this lovely chair and you can see all of the Alberta files behind me and read you a couple of letters from Alberta's time that explains a few of the parties. So I think that will be quite fun. So let's transfer over to this lovely, comfortable chair. So I thought I would give you guys a couple of examples from letters that have been transcribed by the virtual volunteers, which shows you the parties that they had at Hinchingbrook one over 100 years ago. Now this letter was from Saturday the 4th of March 1905 from Alberta Sturgis when she was still uh, single to George Montesquieu and he was courting her at the time and she had a huge party it sounds like at the place that they were renting in London 12 Bruton Street and she writes to George the party is over I am really distressed that you are ill, so clearly George wasn't there. Do be good and tell me frankly what the doctor thinks. She continues to write, Mother, as in her mother, Betty, came down last night and enjoyed herself too, I think. Your mother was very dear and helpful. Olga, which would be his sister, quite lovely in soft white satin. Mademoiselle Sparkva played beautifully and quite wonderfully too. It is what you might have enjoyed. And then she writes, very good music. 
uh, a friend, uh, so-and-so's friend, the Honorable, of course, it's always titles, Hutchinson, a nice boy, and oh, many others you know. Lady Charlie in the gayest of spirits, and your wise father who sat off in a corner with a pretty American. <laughs> So I just thought that was really, really interesting uh, to read. And then the other one, I'm going to read one more. And I think this one's quite fascinating as well. And this is when she is married and it's right before uh, Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. It's a letter uh, from Alberta Montague when she was married to her mother, uh, Bessie or Betty McLeod, December 24th, 1907. And she writes, December 24th, Christmas Eve, darling, a thick fog, but your letter about the new precious babe thrills me. Her brother had just had uh, a baby. I read it to George and we are in love. Bless it. I've been so full of peace all these months. It is wonderful. And then she writes down uh, further down below and she says, Uncle Hinch, who at the time was the eighth Earl of Sandwich, is very nice and dear, full of fun, very kind. We have the tree this afternoon and 150 people from uh, all over, uh, all over the county. And so she just goes on and on to say that they've got these 150 people that they'll be entertaining. And then she ends it with uh, 150 uh, people, including children, at a heavenly dinner. I am to go home Saturday. 1908 will be a leap year. I believe it will bring you all sorts of good things. Uh, and so it just goes to show you that they were constantly entertaining. And then the last thing, I think, which is pretty spectacular, is in 1914, so uh, Alberta still at that time was not the Countess of Sandwich. That didn't happen until 1916. But Uncle Hinch, who I just referred to there, who was at the 8th Earl of Sandwich, held a fancy dress ball at Hinchingbrook. And it hit the newspapers like wildfire. And what they were wearing was just so extravagant and wonderful. And you have, you know, Lady So-and-so and Lord So-and-so and Viscount and Viscountess, uh, all kind of all over the place uh, here, really, really properly dressed up. And they went all out here. I mean, there's articles from Vanity Fair, lots of articles from Vanity Fair, which is, I think pretty spectacular, but also just to think how wonderful it was to be a part of, I think, this era, this bygone era uh, that, you know, no longer necessarily exists, but did exist. And we can look back at these spectacular uh, photo albums here. You can see the uh, coronet here, the sandwich, Earl of Sandwich coronet here and the S for sandwich, and this was a scrapbook between 1912 and 1914. So that brings me to today, 2023, <laughs> nearly 110 years after this fancy dress ball at Hinchingbrook. And what do we do here at Mapperton, our now historic house um, that is open to the public, but we, things have changed and we don't have these fancy dress parties anymore, but we do do something uh, quite spectacular and wonderful. Of course, after the Second World War in particular, these large estates and houses were uh, massively taxed. Um, those who went off to war, many of them didn't come back. And it was a real difficult period, especially for those homeowners who had large houses and properties. They were taxed on the size of the house and the properties. And so that's why so many of these historic houses were lost. And in 1955, uh, that was quite a year. That was a year that saw a, a house, a historic house, basically knocked down, leveled uh, every five days. 
absolutely astounding. Now, there have been laws that have been put into place to stop that from ever happening again, but it was quite common. And 1955 was the year that Luke's, my husband's grandfather, could no longer uh, make Hinchingbrook Castle is what it was once referred to work. It you know went into sort of an economic depression and he could no longer uh, keep up the costs and the amount of taxes that he had to pay. Luckily, he decided not to uh, bulldoze down the house, which is what many of these homeowners uh, were forced to do. It is now a wonderful school. And instead he purchased Mapperton here, which is a lovely historic house. But again, we're quite lucky because that was the year that, like I said, one house every five days was being leveled. Luckily, Hinchingbrook is still standing and we do go back there um, to visit. So today, what we've done here and what many historic houses have done is they've opened up the houses and the gardens and really the estate to the public. So we have house tours here, we have garden tours, we have a cafe, we have a huge rewilding project, we have rewilding tours, we have weddings, and all of this income that we receive, this visitor income that we receive, goes back into the estate to help to preserve it for future generations, but also allows us to uh, fix things like the roof, uh, do conservation work on uh, within the house where we need to repair things or restore pictures, and also when we need to add ensuite bathrooms because for the first time ever, instead of having the grand party that happened over 100 years ago, we're having our own grand party. We're calling it Grand Historic Tour here at Mattreton. And in just a few days time, we are having a huge party. 12 Americans are arriving for five nights, six days to stay here with me and Luke. There will be uh, two big dinners, one of them black tie. We will be dressed to the nines. We will be having drinks in the drawing room, followed by dinner in the dining room, and then afterwards having after dinner drinks in the hall. We have a recital in the library. And it's really showing these um, guests who are coming, you know, kind of having a little bit of fun of what it was like over 100 years ago. And we can still do that today, but on a much smaller scale. But also showing the visitors what happens um, here on the estate. We are still open to the public as far as the gardens go. So the guests will be able to roam around at the same time that other visitors are here as well. They'll be doing a rewilding tour. They will have their own private house and garden tour. They will be visiting two other historic houses who um, houses are spectacular and having a private lunch with, with each of those owners as well. And it's really giving these, I think, these guests an opportunity to see, uh, you know, what these houses were once used as to have these big grand parties. And by the way, we're really excited to actually have a couple proper dinner parties here in the house with my fellow compatriots. I'm so excited, but also to share what it, you know, what really goes on at these estates and these historic houses and behind the scenes and the hard work that goes into them. So I have been, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cleaning the house, uh, dressing the house, setting up the house, preparing the house for these 12 American guests to make sure that everything is just as perfect as it possibly can be. And so there is a big, uh, a big difference, whereas over 100 years ago, as I, you saw from those photographs, there was lots of staff to help with that. <laughs> There's not so much anymore. I definitely need to get a manicure um, from cleaning the library and scrubbing the timber floors, but it helps me connect, I think, a little bit more to the house here and, ha and appreciate it and uh, definitely more than ever before. And I think for me personally, it's something that I have really enjoyed doing and the house looks spectacular, absolutely spectacular. So if you're interested in coming on one of our Grand Historic Tours in 2024, do check out the link down below. It Again, it's an opportunity for you to have what they had over 100 years ago, sort of that Downton Abbey-esque 
uh, opportunity, but at the same time to be able to experience what really goes on behind um, the working estate that we have here at Mapperton. And I think that's really rather interesting and wonderful. So do check out the details down below. I'm gonna get back to digitizing more of Alberta's letters and sending them out to those wonderful virtual volunteers who are transcribing them all across the world. And that's it for me. Bye everybody and see you back here very soon for another American Viscountess at home.